hello, Mr. MatPat, sir. I'd like to be a theorist. Hmm. No offense, kid, but lots of people want to be theorists. What do you bring to the table? Well, uh, I have an allergy. An allergy? How's that help? It's an allergy to wrong theories. Really? Bruce Willis's character was alive in The Sixth Sense. Achoo! Belle was actually the beast all along, and the prince was the beauty. Achoo! Sans is Ness. Ha! Internet, welcome to Style Theory, the show that's not afraid to ask the big questions, like what type of stitch is used on thing? Fun fact, by the way, there's actually more than one. Up there at the top of the hand, you can actually see that they were using a simple interrupted stitch, where each suture is tied off independently from the other, whereas the other stitching that you see on the hand appears to be a classic simple running suture. Both of them are using a non-absorbable synthetic suture, probably made of nylon, lest fan favorite the thing starts to fall apart at the seams when his sutures disintegrate. Oh, I'm sorry. You thought that we'd only cover clothing stitching on this channel? Oh, ye of little faith. Sometimes you just need to think outside of the box. Speaking of outsiders, Netflix decided to remind the world of the creepy, kooky, mysterious, and spooky Adams Family with their new show focused on the titular character, Wednesday. In the show, we follow Wednesday as she's forced to attend a new school, her parents' alma mater, Nevermore Academy. It's there that Wednesday's informed that she's expected to adhere to their school's uniform policy. Well, there's certainly a lot to talk about when it comes to style on this particular show. It's really good, actually. There was one exchange in particular that caught my attention. Please excuse Wednesday. She's allergic to color. What happens to you? I break out into hives and then the flesh peels off my bones. Yikes! That would be an intense allergy. Now obviously this was meant to be a snarky joke and later on in the series we even see Wednesday interacting with color without melting like the bad guy in an Indiana Jones movie. But it did make me wonder, can you actually be allergic to color? Is there any way that this could be a real thing or is this just another mystery from the dark mind of Wednesday Adams? I was just working on my novel. I'm sure this burning question's been keeping you awake at night just like it did to me, so thank goodness we have ourselves a style channel now so we can answer it. Let's go, my fashionistas! Now, for those of you who are less familiar with Wednesday and her unique family, here's the rundown to catch you up. The Adams Family started as a cartoon for The New Yorker in 1938, back before dressing like a Hot Topic employee was considered a normal aesthetic for a 14-year-old. The Adams Family were built from the ground up to basically be the antithesis of the everyday American family at the time. While Americans in the 40s were contributing to the war effort and heading for the white picket fences of the suburbs, the Adams Family lived in a massive old dark house around surrounded by a graveyard and perpetually dead trees. They found joy in the macabre and beauty in the weird, without caring what the outside world thought about them. Over the years, there have been various adaptations and interpretations of the family, and especially of Wednesday herself. In the 1964 live-action TV series, Wednesday was the younger sibling. In a different animated series, she's depicted as wearing pink and blue dresses instead of black. The colorless, more gothic style that we associate with Wednesday today was mostly originated by the 1991 and 93 movie classics The Addams Family and Addams Family Valley. Values, which starred Christina Ricci as a torture-loving, deadpan Wednesday. This iconic depiction of the character led the way to the current color-intolerant version of Wednesday that we know today. But while being allergic to color might be on brand for her, is there any scientific basis to anything that she's saying? In the show, Wednesday says that she gets hives and, uh, the flesh peels off her bones, which sounds more like a strong acid than an allergy, but I think we can safely say skin irritation is big on her list. And interestingly, when it comes to allergies in general, she might not be that far off the mark. By way of a little background, an allergic response is one where your body's own immune system interprets something not harmful as actually being harmful. A little dust, some pollen, not things that really harm your body, but when you're allergic, your immune system sees those substances as germs instead of normal materials, and it sends out the big guns, your antibodies. Your antibodies trigger all kinds of allergic and inflammation responses, basically creating a big deal out of something that should be totally fine until it's gone. The more your body doesn't like whatever it is that you're allergic to, the stronger your reaction's gonna be. It can be as mild as your eyes turning red due to dust to something more extreme like full-on anaphylactic shock from coming into contact with peanuts. So how then can color cause the kind of allergic reaction that Wednesday describes? Well, to understand that, we need to look a little bit closer at the nature of color itself because it's not all created equally. In the strictest sense, color is just light. When you see a rainbow out in the sky, you're seeing regular old light that's been broken across the entire spectrum. So we know that all of those colors are in there, they're just hidden in there. Or to put it more accurately, the colors in light have just been jumbled all together 
together, and the mix that we see in the daytime is a mashup of all of them, which comes to our eyes as plain white light. White light, or just regular daylight, is a wave, a little squiggly line that goes up and down and hits our eyeballs all over the place. But look closer at the regular waves of visible light, and you'll actually see that they're not all the same. Some of them have higher wavelengths, and some of them have lower wavelengths. If your wavelengths get higher, that's where the waves are all stretched out and loosey-goosey, and the light turns red. Lower wavelength light is where the waves are all getting scrunched up and tight looking, and the light turns blue and purple. All the other colors fall somewhere in the middle. When a specific wavelength hits our eye, our brain knows to interpret it as a color. So how then do we get different wavelengths hitting our eyes? Well, almost every object absorbs some wavelengths of light and bounces back others. It's the ones that bounce and ultimately hit our eyes that produce color. Take for instance that blue in our brand new Style Theory logo. Isn't it beautiful? Doesn't it make you want to hit the subscribe button so you can see it again and again and again? What was I saying? Oh, oh yeah, our logo looks blue because it's mostly reflecting blue light into our eyes and absorbing all other colors. Leaves on trees, they absorb a whole bunch of light wavelengths, but not green. You get the idea. The color you see is basically the color that gets rejected from whatever you're looking at. When we see black, what we're really seeing is an object that's absorbing all the wavelengths of light, just sucking them all up in there until there's nothing left. When there are no wavelengths of light bouncing off an object, we don't get any waves entering our eyes, so our object looks like it has no color, black. And that idea right there should strike you as a little odd considering the topic for today's episode. Black clothing is absorbing all the colors of light. So technically by wearing black, Wednesday is wearing every color. Right off the bat, this seems to be contradicting the idea that she's allergic to color. Her all black clothing literally absorbs all colors of light in the spectrum. If she were allergic to color, what she should really be wearing is white, a color that reflects all the wavelengths of visible light so it bounces off of her. But not only is she doing it wrong, so's the school. Her black dominated wardrobe and the special uniform provided to her by the school for her condition are actually the single worst thing to give a person with color allergy. They're nothing but color, and that color is coming into direct contact with the allergic person's skin. Talk about a red flag. It's like taking someone allergic to bees and then making them join the beekeeping club without a protective suit. The hive life isn't for everyone. But okay, I hear you saying there's more to color than just light, especially when it comes to clothing. So maybe we just try a different approach. Most fabric doesn't magically come off a loom in all the colors of the rainbow. As most of us know, for clothes that have color, they first need to be dyed. And dyes open up a whole new closet of issues when we're talking about allergies. Textile dye dermatitis, which is the sciencey way of saying clothing dye makes skin hurt, is more common than people think, and mostly that's just due to lack of awareness. When a piece of clothing makes you itch, we usually assume that it's just the texture of the fabric being used that's making you itchy. I know that I've never assumed that it was the fabric dyes, but very often that's the case. This happens when the water-soluble color dyes are separated from the fabric by sweating in your clothes. This causes the dyes to bleed out onto your skin, causing symptoms like dermatitis or inflammation of the skin. You might be thinking, that's easy, I'll just wear black or white, and again, we need to reframe how we think about black and white as being without color. Let's just start with the most relevant color of black. Black isn't really a color that you can make a dye of, and most of the dyes that make black clothing are actually secretly a very dark blue, purple, or green. Dispersed blue 106 and 124, two dark blue dyes that are often used in making black linens, have some of the highest case rates of allergic reactions out there. So unlike our last case, this one actually gets Wednesday on two accounts. Not only is the black in her clothes not actually black, it's probably blue or green, she's also soaking in color every time she wears it, just marinating in color. So then, what about white? Well, most white fabric bases, like cotton, actually start off as a beige, and then they're heavily bleached to make them whiter before they're made into consumer goods. And bleach, just like fabric dye, is known to cause problems to people with sensitive skin, including contact dermatitis. This means that Wednesday, who throughout the show we see wearing black and white with zero issue, is not suffering from having skin-to-skin -skin contact with colored dyes or even chemically treated white fabric. Everything we know about allergies, clothing, and how the two come together tells us that Wednesday is just lying so she can keep up the serial killer next door vibes while she goes to math class. So I guess we can now close the case on the mysterious color allergy. Unless, of course, there's another way to be allergic to color, but not necessarily because of your clothes. Most of our discussion so far has been based on the idea that color is light, and we talked about the idea of being allergic to different wavelengths of light individually, the ones that make the individual colors. But can you be allergic to light itself? Well, it turns out the answer is a resounding yes, but that still won't clear Wednesday's name in this case. Let me show you what I mean. You see, light is not just a wave of pretty colors, it's also waves of radiation. And like other types of radiation, it comes with its own set of dangers. You've probably put on sunscreen before, right? Sunscreen helps protect us from a type of light, UV or ultraviolet light, which also goes by its formal name, ultraviolet radiation. UV exposure can cause all types of different health risks, 
risks. Sunburn, sun damage, like wrinkles or changing of skin texture, as well as more serious problems like skin cancer. It can even burn your eyes, which is why everyone always tells you not to stare into the sun. You hear that, Taylor Swift? Stop singing about staring into the sun. Go put back on your extremely expensive sunglasses. But yeah, okay, not rocket science that the sun can hurt your skin, but what does this have to do with allergies? Well, it turns out that you can actually be allergic to the sun. A sun allergy, which is actually a broad term covering several types of conditions, can be hereditary, meaning that you inherit it from your parents, or it can just be triggered by other stimulus like medication. Whatever the condition, the reaction is usually the same, an itchy rash that forms on the skin after exposure to UV radiation. This rash can range from flushed skin and tiny bumps to full-on, wouldn't you know it, hives and blisters that could cause your skin to peel. Exactly like how Wednesday described her reaction to color. I break out into hives and then the flesh peels off my bones. Is this what Wednesday means when she says that she's allergic to color? Where she's actually allergic to the combined colors of light? Well, yes, this is actually the most plausible solution in the show. Take a look at what she wears throughout the series and we suddenly see a common theme. Coverage. And Wednesday's not being modest here. We're just talking about a full-on protective coating of clothing. From the long sleeves and jackets to the pants and long skirts, turtlenecks and boots, Wednesday is covered from head to toe. Plus, dark clothing protects better against UV light than, say, the past of her roommates. While this can certainly be attributed to simply a style preference, it does fall in line with the precautions that someone with a major sun allergy could need to take, at least theoretically. If we look at the real-world cases of UV light allergies, we can see that the show has taken a number of creative liberties here. Real cases of UV allergy are actually extremely difficult to manage because, as you might imagine, UV light is pretty much everywhere. Well, yes, covering your body is a big part of managing the condition. People with the allergy often have a lot of extra freckles on their skin from past exposures. They also often have to wear special headgear with UV filters and solid coverage to avoid any kind of UV light hitting their faces, scalps, or eyes. Now look at Wednesday. We see from the outset that Wednesday has always worn full coverage clothing from the top of her neck to her feet, because if you really have UV allergies, you have to cover everything. Even in the instances where we do see Wednesday outdoors, it's either one, at night, when UV exposure is down, two, wearing full-on headgear like when she's dressing up like a pilgrim, or three, in a worst-case scenario, she's in a boating outfit that includes yet another their turtleneck and full leather gloves. This even extends to her chosen extracurricular activities, beekeeping and fencing, which are just about the only two activities on the planet that involve full headgear and face coverings, perfect for someone who wants to make sure that light isn't hitting their face even in their downtime. In fact, the only time that we see her arms exposed in the entire series is during an indoor dance that takes place at night, which would be consistent with someone who has a UV sensitivity. There you have it, friendos, just about the only explanation possible for how someone could be allergic to color and still be wearing all black. You're welcome, Netflix. You're welcome, Adam's Family Canon. And you're welcome, Wednesday. Because here's the thing. Is Wednesday probably just lying about this entire thing so she can keep her gothy wardrobe intact? Is she actually just using black as both a means of disappearing and as a means of expressing her otherwise totally repressed personality? Yes, yes, and a big ol' yes. But guess who's got your back there, bestie? That's right, we do. When logic catches up with her, we've got all the justification she needs to keep her wardrobe as dark as her stone-cold little soul. But hey, that's just a theory. A style theory. Keep looking sharp.